All right, welcome back everybody to another Real Talk video. I pray y'all are having a wonderful, blessed Friday as we give the Most High all the honor, the glory, and all the praise and worship. My title now says, Is My Mama Really Looking Down on Me from Heaven? I want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Tully. Um, great email. Uh, this is a um, beautiful question. Uh, powerful question. I tell people all the time, this is when you get questions like these, man, it's very interesting to me because a lot of people wonder about their loved ones. And a lot of times we hear, especially at funerals, they're in a better place. Oh, you don't have to worry, man. Mama is looking down on you from heaven. Mama is sitting right beside the good Lord. Or your brother or your uncle or whoever it was that passed away, they're in a better place. they sitting right beside the Father. And that causes so much confusion because the Bible speaks of more than one heaven. And um, the problem with this whole outlook is what heaven really is to a lot of people. Uh, we hear people sing about heaven, you know, when I get to the other side, when I go through the clouds, when I put on my, my gold slippers, when I put on my white robe, we hear all this you know, this singing and talking about and hooping and hollering and sermons and at many funerals, you're going to hear a lot. But the question is, is that what the Bible really teaches? See, tradition um, and, and feel-good sermons have messed up so many people. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know it all. But I will tell you what the Word says, what the Word shows us. But most people, when you talk to them, their outlook on what heaven is is totally different than what the Bible shows us, especially when you get to a book like Revelation that's dealing with past, present, and future, which means to reveal. And Revelation shows you that the old heaven passes away. So when you talk about heaven, the question is, which heaven are you talking about? Because where the most high dwells, nobody has went there except the most high. Or we could say Yahshua, Emmanuel, God with us, our Father in the flesh. Other than that, nobody has went. The scripture teaches us that. I've done separate videos on that. Nobody has went where the Most High dwells. That's totally separated from everything else, my brothers and sisters. Some people think their loved ones are sitting right beside the Most High. Uh, and a lot of preachers out here make that mistake when they take the scriptures out of context and put everybody that they do a funeral, that they do the eulogy behind, they put them in heaven. And when you read books like Luke 16, it, it shows you something totally different. Why? Because everybody wasn't sitting in the same spot. See, when you start talking about hell, the grave, Sheol, Hades, the common holding place, as the Greek and Hebrew teaches us, most people, when they hear her hell, they act a fool behind it because they picture some literally burning place. But in reality, hell is known as the grave, you know, the dark place, the common holding tank until judgment. That's what the Bible teaches. Now, some people say hell and the lake of fire is the same place. I don't teach that on here. I don't teach that period because hell, as the Bible say, will be judged. The grave will be judged and the lake of fire. See, when you talk about the second death, no one should want to be a part of that. There is eternal damnation and then there is eternal life with the Father. But um, I want to get that out the way first before we move on because the Bible, once again, is clear on everything about heaven, you know, and then hell, Sheol, the grave. Or then you say, you say the lake of fire once again, which is totally different. Um, that's Satan's. That's the laws for real, eternal home. You know, that's where the wicked will dwell forever. The ones who didn't want to, you know, take part in, in the most high's way. They didn't want Yahweh. They wanted their own way. So the false beast, as the Bible teaches you, the beast, the false prophet, <laughs> Satan, the wicked ones, they have their own home. You know, the question is, where is your loved one sitting at? Hmm. Now that we got that out the way, let's deal with, can my mama really see me from heaven? We hear all these popular sayings because 
they popular now. They've been popular for years and years. Oh, man, my brother looking down on me from heaven. I know they can see me. Now, really, the question is, can they really see you? You see what I'm saying? Or not? Can people in heaven really look down and see you? Great question once again, my brother. Now, we can say, let me, let me take my time with this. Because this comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I want to take my time and make sure I break this down in the most simplest way. Um, Hebrews 12 and 1 is where people get this from. Because it speaks about a loud, uh, not a loud, but a large crowd of witnesses. It says in Hebrews 12 and 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Cloud in the group um, also means crowd. I mean, cl uh, cloud in the Greek also means, no, I said it right. Cloud in the Greek also means a crowd, a group of people. And then it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which dope so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, y'all notice what I always say. Um, know who's doing the talking, who is talking to. Now, Hebrews author says unknown, but this is the only book you're going to find where it starts off with God. Many people debating and arguing about who is actually the, the author of Hebrews. I tell people all the time, the most high. Because it says unknown. It didn't say it was Paul. It didn't say it was Peter. It didn't say a name. But when you look at it, a lot of people say, well, this had to be Paul. But it's not so much of who it is. It's what has been said. Now, when we understand what has just been said with Hebrews 12 and 1, the witnesses, who are they? The heroes of faith listed back in the previous chapter, Hebrews 11. So a lot of commentators will say that, well, they actually are looking down on us. But is that really what Hebrews 12 and 1 is teaching us? No. And I'm going to tell you the simple fact why. Chapter 12 begins with the word, therefore. Now, when you see the word therefore, you should stop and pause and put a note right there. Because the word therefore ties into what was previously written before. And what we read in Hebrews chapter 12 and 1 tells us who these cloud of witnesses are. What was it written for? The witnesses are the people whom the Most High commended for their faith. They lived by faith and not by fear in chapter 11. That was, the, that was the largest crowd of them in heaven that the scripture was teaching us. So the question is, what way are they witnesses? You see? And now we have all these um, different Bibles and different interpretations. A lot of stuff just causing so much confusion. But the proper interpretation of Hebrews 12 and 1 is that the men and the women forming that great cloud of witnesses... Those were the ones who witnessed, once again, to the value of living life by their faith. The Old Testament stories we learn from. The Old Testament stories give testimony to the blessings of choosing faith over fear. Because faith and fear does not mix. You're going to live in faith or you're going to live in fear. Which one do you choose? Those who have went on before us that have died have set a great long living example for us now I hear a lot of people also they go to Luke 16 they talk about the rich man you know mentioning his brothers you know he wanted his brothers to be saved in Luke 16 um, get around verse 28 they use that to say that well he can see what was going on but we have to understand also seeing spiritually Spiritually, that passage in Luke 16 it never said that the rich man could see his brothers. He knew his brothers. He knew that they needed to be saved. He knew that his brothers was pretty much unbelievers, and he looked at where he where he winded up at. See, when you talk about that gulf, 
that separation line, I like to say. When you look at the part of hell, you got the part where the unsaved is going, and then you got the part of Abraham's bosoms, as it's called, where Lazarus was at. When you read, you'll see where Lazarus was at, and then you see where the rich man was at. They wasn't in the same place. And he knew that his brothers was unbelievers. That rich man was, was, was pretty much asking for his brothers to be saved, if you just break down the story. So he knew, it never said that the rich man could see his brothers in so many ways. Now, I'm just I'm just kind of breaking this down because I know a lot of people use that and they use um, Revelation 6 and 10 as a proof. The ones who was going through, you know, but that passage never said nothing about the ones that have died that the marches was seeing people on earth. It says they knew they deserved justice. They was wondering how long, Father, is it going to be before you get them that punished us? They knew that they deserved justice. So, but I can also say, as on the flip side in this video, the Bible does not specifically say that people in, in heaven cannot look down on us. But see, the thing I get past is I'm not worried about who's looking down on me. I'm not running this race for all of my loved ones that has passed. I'm running this race for, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about myself. See, you can't pray me into heaven, you know. My mama can't get me into heaven. My daddy can't get me into heaven. Nobody can get me into heaven, so why am I going to be worried about who's looking down on me? I heard, I heard brothers all the time saying, man, I got to do this for my mama. I know my mama, she watching me close. In reality, do you even really know where your mama went? See, the Bible is so clear on this. But we, what we have done, we have lied. So we have let, excuse me, so many feel good sayings mess up our way of thinking. We have let so many feel good sayings take the place of scripture. Well, mama said this. Well, daddy said that. Well, my uncle, he told me that. Well, that's okay if it lines up with the scripture. You see what I'm saying? But we're not running this race for whoever's looking down on us. See, the question is, where are your loved ones at right now? Where are the ones at who have died right now? Or are they sitting with the Father, really? Are they? Do you believe that? Is that what the scriptures say? We have to understand the dead in Christ rises first. Nobody goes before the dead in Christ. That's the whole problem with this secret teaching, this secret rapture, this sneaking in way, this catching away, this I'm going to go like this and you don't even leave. Flesh does not enter heaven. You have to be in that spiritual body. But with all this confusion, the pre-trib teaching, then you have the post-trib. You got the mid-trip. Now you got a bunch of confusion because a lot of people just don't know what to think no more. Well, where my mama is? She died 20 years ago. You mean to tell me, JT, my mama not sitting right beside God? No. Hmm. Nobody is sitting right beside God. Well, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, is he really? Where is Jesus at right now, if that's the question? See, that sounds confusing to people when I say that. What is the Holy Spirit? What did Yahshua, why did Yahshua, why did Yahshua say, I have to go away because if I don't go away, I can't send what? The comforter. The Holy Spirit. He said, I got to go. What was that? What was the point of that? Where is Yahshua right now? Man, if it was I'd like, he's still on the cross. When you understand the transition, what was left behind, what you're supposed to be operating in, you live a totally different life, my brothers and sisters. Revelation 6 and 9 says, 
And when he had opened up the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. They were still waiting on the return. Remember Revelation? Past, present, and future. Go back and read the fifth seal. What happened? Who were those souls? I didn't even say people, did I? I say, who was those souls that were slain for the word of the Most High? What was they waiting on? A lot of them were killed for their testimony. They wasn't sitting with God, was they? They was in paradise. Is paradise and heaven the same place? No. Nope. I'll let y'all answer that. I'm saying no. Uh, am I correct? Check what JT says. But I saw under the soul, I mean under the altar, those of them who were slain for the word of God. What was John seeing as he was taken up in the spirit on the day of the Lord? See, a lot of people miss that. If you miss this in Revelation, you might as well quit reading Revelation. The Bible says John was taken up in the spirit on the day of the Lord. In the spirit. So John never left the island of Patmos. He was taken up in the spirit. Now, if I was to say something as I wrap this video up, if I was to say right now, all the ones that died, they in hell. You know how many people get mad at me? Because they won't even look up what the meaning of hell really is. If I say, your mom in hell, bro. Oh, sister, your, your daddy in hell right now. Why you talking about my dad in hell? Why would you say something like that? Because most people don't even understand hell all I have just said in the correct term is they went to the grave. See what I'm saying? If I say when I die, I'm going to hell. Most people don't even understand what I just said. All I just simply said was I was going to the grave. Hmm. Now, which part of hell are you going to be sitting on? You going to be like Lazarus or are you going to be like the rich man? That separation line, that rich man noticed he couldn't go where Lazarus was at. He could, afar uh, off, he was, the Bible said, afar uh, off. Hmm. How did I wind up here? Hmm. It shows you it's two different sides. Most people would get mad at me when I say they went to hell. When I'm just simply saying the grave, Hades, Sheol, the common grave. That holding tank. Once again, the Bible says hell will be judged. Now, this is something to think about as I close. If the Bible says hell will, will be judged, who holds the keys to Hades? Not me, not you. The Father. That's the only one who knows who's going where. As I close, the three shocks you're going to see about heaven, who you don't see, who you see and you're going to be shocked you made it in because the Bible is clear on few will be in heaven and how most people are headed toward the wide gate straight narrow is the way most people go on the wide route so just make sure you're not in the wide gate and the ones about that they really believe they go going to heaven and they really believe they convincing you that you're going, but they really going toward destruction. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful blessed day. So as I close, once again, the Bible does not say that people cannot see what's going on right now on earth, but it's also clear on what has really happened, you know. So y'all have a wonderful blessed day.